Hi. I'm sick. I've been sick all December, and now it's January, which is why I'm filming this in January instead of December. I want to make a video about all the books I read in 2023. These aren't going to be reviews, so I'm just going to give you like my star rating and what is currently on the list for 2024. And then I'm going to do individual videos to catch up where I actually like go in depth and review them and you know, everything like that. So I have my Goodreads pulled up and I read roughly 30 books this year and I can find most of them. They're, the rest are somewhere, but I don't know where. Okay. So I also, because the year started over, I can't get Goodreads to give me the list so I can do it in order. It's whatever. So we're just going to do it in the order that it pops up. When you do like, when you get this, you know? Okay, so this is what we're doing. If I don't have the book, I'll do a picture here. So that y'all know what book I'm talking about. Not in order. I read Welcoming Lilith. I gave it three stars. It is by Teresa C. Dentino. Din uh, sure. Um, it wasn't bad. That wasn't why I gave it three stars. I gave it three stars just because it's so little. It has very, very little information on it. And like she touches on a lot of topics. But uh, basically I just wish there was more. Also it's a large font. So like there's, there's even less than you think is in here. It's good, but it's really just like a baseline. I, I wish there was so much more in it. So that's why it's three stars. I read Salem's Lot by Stephen King. It looks like this. Ba -da -ba -ba. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. I'll find it for the review, I'm sure. Unless I already got rid of it. But I got rid of, I mean, like, take to a used bookstore and trade out for a new book. I might have. Because I read that at the beginning of the year, for sure. But, anyway. Sam's Slot. Um, it's one of Stephen King's first novels that he came out with. I don't know which number it was. It wasn't the first, but it's, like, one of the first. So it's, like, old Stephen King. And I haven't really discussed Stephen King on this channel yet but I'm growing tired of him. I went through a really big Stephen King phase when I was in high school because I went like Goosebumps, Arl Stein, Stephen King. And yes, I know Arl Stein like Goosebumps, but there's two sects. There's like elementary school horror, which is Goosebumps, and then there's the books that are just under Arl Stein, which is like middle school horror. And then you graduate to Stephen King. So, I have like a love-hate relationship because I did go through a really big Stephen King phase where I read like Carrie and The Shining, which are amazing books. And I love them. And then someone actually recommended Salem's Lot to me because it's about vampires. And I fucking love vampires. They're my favorite monster. Anything that has to do with a vampire, I'm down. So I was like, fuck me up, bitch. Okay? Now, this show is disappointing as fuck. I'm gonna do a whole review on it, but I gave it three stars because it tried. I wrote a review on it actually on Goodreads, but I don't wanna read my review without going into like the full video because my review has spoilers because it talks about specific plot points that are complete and utter bullshit. Ugh. This is one of the Stephen King ones where if you read a lot of Stephen King, you start to notice his like writing patterns and you start to notice that he has very anticlimactic endings for some of his books. Not all. The Shining has a great ending. Carrie has a weird ending, but it's still good. But anticlimactic endings. Like anyone, has anyone read Needful Things by Stephen King? Weird anticlimactic ending. 
and that's what this is it's very disappointing and uh, also I hated all of the characters every single one they all suck well maybe the priest was interesting I wish you would have gone into that more anyway we'll talk about that I'll make a video we'll do a full in-depth review about like why I hate the characters and why I would wish they all had died but three stars don't read it <laughs> also don't read it it's bad I have this one the Necronomicon this is Simon's version to specify it's gonna take me a hot minute to make a video on this because there's so much lore that goes with this as to like why this book was even written and why there's different versions but like why I would say this is Simon's version I'm saying this is Simon's version because like brief backstory this book is mentioned in a bunch of HP Lovecraft stories as like the book of the dead and he'll like I don't remember if he like quotes it specifically but it's mentioned a lot it's talked about a lot as this like forbidden book of magic basically and people have gone and written it basically and there's different versions there's the versions that are like closer to what was described in hp lovecraft and then there's like this version which is it's like simon's version because like it's like a fake person wrote this down he's um like basically he says that this is something that someone told him and he has to write it down because they're like coming to get him but when you read it it's not like what was in hp lovecraft it's more of a brief summary of sumerian myths and legends which is cool because sumerian stuff is really cool but that's what it is it's if you thought this was going to be some like crazy dark shit it's not it, it's once you get past this like weird introduction about like alistair crawley and stuff like that then you get into like the meat of it and it's really just like sumerian lore it's it, disappointing honestly because if you were expecting i mean it's it's like when you read the satanic bible which I have read and do want to make a video on, but that's a whole other thing because I have to address all of the like, ooh, Satan. And it's, they're literally atheists. And it's just a name, but anyway. It's like when you read that, you expect it to be this like life altering, like <gasps> evil, like whatever thing, because that's what people tell you that it is because you know, ooh, scary book of the dead, ooh, scary Satanism. And it's not. It's just a book this is just this is just Sumerian lore like it's not scary it's not it's whatever very anticlimactic I gave it two stars read it if you want I guess it's really confusing not just in how it's written but in the fact that it's all like Sumerian lore and the only reason I recognize that is because there's been like little bits of like Sumerian goddesses and stuff that I've read before and so that's how I started recognizing the names and realizing what it was before I started like researching the book because I didn't research it until after I was finished because I didn't want it to like I want to treat it fresh without knowing eh. it's whatever read it if you want it's not exciting if you do i mean i guess it's exciting to have on your shelf to like scare christians but it's whatever also i didn't read the satanic bible this year i read it last year which is why it's not gonna be in this like recap i'm just gonna bring up one of these books because it's a series chainsaw man i read six through twelve of the mangas and I do have them all and I don't know like manga is so 
like sideways from my like horror witchy content. I don't know if y'all would be interested in me talking about Chainsaw Man, but I, I read I read 6 through 12 this year and then I also watched the show and they're amazing and I really like them and I would recommend it if you're interested in manga, but that's like a very it's not my normal my normal shit on this channel, so I don't know if that's interesting. Okay, they're really far back there on the shelf and I don't want to pull them out, so I'm just going to post a picture. I read a few Jujutsu Kaisens, also manga, but I'm just including it to say that I did. Okay, apparently the only Jujutsu Kaisen I read was four this year. I'm not very far in, no, I haven't watched the show, but also very good. Currently I like Chainsaw Man better, but I'm also like way deeper into Chainsaw Man, so I need time. I read Demon Slayer. I only have four on here, but I've read more than four. I only have four on here, but I did read Demon Slayer. I have watched the first season of Demon Slayer. Also very good. That's my little manga talk. Those are the three mangas that I'm reading currently. Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man. Recommend them all. Anyway, I read Cord Magic by Brandy Williams. I actually started this book last year, like 2022, and then stopped because I got really bored and then started reading it again and finished it this year because I was trying to like go back to books that I had started and like actually finish them. Two stars. Not good. I'll make a video on it. Not good. I got it before I got married because we had a pagan ceremony where I did a hand fasting ceremony. And so I wanted, I got this cord magic book that was supposed to like talk about not necessarily a hand fasting ceremony, but like stuff with string, yarn, twist, and knots. Cause I thought this would give me some more like information about just like using it possibly in my ceremony it didn't that's why I stopped reading it and then I got married and then I finally went back to it to like finish it to see if there was useful information there's really not maybe a little but I wouldn't recommend the book literally at all like at all I gave it two stars. I'll make a video about it, but don't read it. Skip that one, girly pop. Not worth it. Trust and believe. This book I gave to my best friend. This is the Sabbath's Almanac from Samhain 2022 to Maybomb 2023. I read that because I read the one for the year before and it's Sal 2021 to Maybomb 2022 and I liked the one from the year before I did and that was the first one I had ever read so I got the Sabbath's Almanac it's by Llewellyn by the way um but so I got the one for this year expecting to also like it and I hated the one for this year hated it because I found out that once you've read one Sabbath's Almanac you've read all the Sabbath's Almanacs I don't like them. I don't approve of them. They have the same information, just like written in a different way. There's no point to getting it over multiple years. Like I was so heavily disappointed because the first time I read it, like the first one, I was like, oh, there's like a little informational like stuff about the meaning of like in bulk and like stuff like that. And it's like informational and it's like cool and fun. And then it's like basically the same shit the next year and I was so fucking bored and then I gave it to my best friend because she said she would take it because there's uh recipes in there and I don't cook so I don't give a shit about recipes but she does cook so she does care about recipes and she also hasn't read the one before so I gave it to her and I was like you have fun with this because I did not so read one so you can get the vibe and then understand that the rest of them are the same vibe every year so don't get it anymore. I'm not getting Llewellyn like yearly stuff at all anymore. I'm just not. 
it's not I thought it was worth it and it's really not I gave that two stars I did read two other Llewellyn's yearly stuff because I bought three at the beginning of this year because I thought I would like them I also read the 2023 Herbal Al Almanac which I like this one much better because it has much more information it's it's a lot of filler there is good information in it there is charts um at the back like these little like astrology charts which are really nice and i do like them it's a lot of filler in between actual information about like herbal things and the filler kills me like llewellyn filler is just people's like childhood story about snow and it's so boring and i do not care so I gave this one three stars because there was actually information in it. But again, I'm not going to get the 2024 one. I don't care about people's filler stories. I would just get an actual herbal book. Because I don't want the filler. The last Llewellyn I read this year is the 2023 Magical Omnic. It has a little sea turtle on it. I gave this one three stars as well. This one was also better than the Sabbaths one. This one has fun drawings in it, which I enjoy. All Llewellyn has like some illustrations, but this one had like more than normal, I would say. So I like that. It does have things for like every day, which is nice. On my review, I said it's a 50-50 split of useful educational articles and drawn out autobiographies that no one cares about. Which is how, what I've gathered, all of Llewellyn's is. All of the almanacs. It's autobiographical bullshit mixed in with useful information. Again, just buy a book about the information. Unless you're really interested in what strangers did during Yule in 1988. Don't bother. Don't bother with Llewellyn's bullshit. Just don't. Nothing but black and teeth. I have a video out on this one, at least. Um, one start, it was trash. Go watch my video. I'll do a little linky on whatever side that it links it to um, until you get to my video. This is absolute trash. Do not read it. I couldn't finish it. It's awful. I go into a full in-depth review and tell you how it ends so that you don't have to wonder. Don't read it. Trash. On that same note, the Mary Shelley Club also have this review up actually so proud of myself go watch it on whatever side it is on this one two stars slightly better i got halfway through this one absolute trash do not read it don't go watch my review awful and the last book i have a review for up the crooked path by Keldon. trash Man with one name. Red flag. No. One star. You think it's useful. You really do. And the cover's so good. The cover's so well done. Nope. Trash. Confusing. Don't know what he's trying to do. Um, it's supposed to be talking about traditional witchcraft. I still don't know what he considers traditional witchcraft because it just seems like an amalgamation of a bunch of other people's witchcraft. Don't. Waste of time. Waste of time. Watch my review. Waste of time. I read The Black Arts by Richard Cavendish. Um, this is the Book Simillion, like, exclusive cover version or something. Um, there, so there are other covers of this. But this is a book from, like, 1967, I believe. And so it's very dated. You can tell when you read it. It's very dated. But... I gave this four stars. I think it's a very good wealth of information, even if it is dated information. You can, it's still historically interesting so that you can see what people believed then. Obviously, there's some shit in there that's, you know, not 2023 approved, 2024 approved, I guess I should say. But it's historical. That's, it's with the time period. When you, the further you go back, the less 
politically correct, I guess you would say, things are and that's just part of reading books written long ago. So I can put that aside and look at the information in the book. I will say one part that made me lose interest and I had to get through it to get back into interest is there is a huge section on alchemy and alchemy just isn't very personally interesting to me but there's a huge section in the middle on alchemy and he goes into explicit detail about like how they were trying to make gold and it is boring if you don't find chemical shit interesting it is boring but the rest of it is interesting and I found it very insightful and I do I did like it again as like a historical read not as like a modern day reference book for your practice okay this book is my next book review that's gonna come out and so it is in the other room because I was typing up my notes on it it is so my version of it is called The Black Phone and Other Stories by Joe Hill. It was originally published as 20th Century Ghosts. It's the same book either way. It's just basically he wrote 20th Century Ghosts a long time ago. It's a collection of short stories. And then one of the short stories called The Black Phone recently got made into a movie that came out this year. Which I have seen. And so he republished... The book with a new cover that has Ethan Hawke on it because that's who plays the main character. Um, so the version I have is the newer version but it's the same book. So I gave it two stars. It made me hate Joe Hill. I'm gonna be so real with you. It made me hate Joe Hill. Somewhere on one of my shelves I have Horns by Joe Hill and I read that in high school and it's really good. At least what I remember is really good. But now that I read 20th Century Ghost, I'm like, was it good? Or was I just young? Like, it really makes me question. I've also read most of Heart Shaped Box, um, also in high school. And by most of it, I mean, I lost the book before I finished it. And when I say lost it, I mean, genuinely, I don't know where the fuck that book is. That book disappeared off the face of the planet. But I read most of Heart Shaped Box, and that was also good. <laughs> but I've never got back to finish it because I just never bothered to buy it again. Because I have a billion other books that I bought, you know? Um, but I'm going to do a full review. That's my next review coming out. I just finished typing up all of my notes. So I can sit down and go through them all. I'm going to do this as a two-part review. It's going to be a review of the 20th Century Ghost portion. Which is all the stories that aren't the black phone. I'm going to talk about each story. And then I'm going to talk about like them as a collective in the book. And then I'm going to do a separate um review on just this black foam story and how it compares to the movie and then also that movie is apparently getting a sequel and for those who don't know the black foam story itself is 20 pages long there is barely anything in there and so i'm gonna give my speculations as to what i believe they're gonna do with the sequel i have absolutely no idea what they're actually doing i will say the movie's good I had a nice time. It's a good, like, creepy horror movie. It's not really... I guess it's more suspense thriller. Maybe a little horror. It's not, like, scary. I guess is the best way to put it. It's not, like, scary. It's just very unsettling. I don't know. I'll talk about it more. But, um, I did, like, the black phone. Like separated from the book. The Black Phone, I think I would have liked it more if I didn't see the movie because I think the movie ruins your experience of reading just like the 20 page short little horror flick. So that separately, and the movie's good. Ethan Hawke kills it. Um, so like that separately, good. Would recommend. Like the movie's good. And honestly, if you're interested in the story, I'd read the story and then watch the movie. But the book of co the collection of stories, trash. Trash. I have so many problems. I have so many problems. And yes, I listed them out. Don't you fucking worry. Trash. It made me not like Joe Hill. Genuinely. Like, as a person. I don't like him. 
and I know that's like you shouldn't base the person off of like what they write but it's it's like reading there's like 14 or 15 short stories in this book and so it's like you're reading 14 or 15 of his books right and so you start to notice patterns and those patterns are not something that I like and they're not something that I, if I was friends with someone, I would want them to have a pattern of writing, if that makes sense. And then, like, if I, like, I would like to be a writer one day. I think that would be fun. But if I had these patterns in my stories, I would be concerned. I don't, one of the ones is how he portrays women is trash. And, and that's what gives me an ick on him. Because, yes, you can separate the, like, guy from the story, but if you write, like, 15 stories where the woman is always portrayed bad and weird and sexually explicit for no reason, it gives me an ick about you, because why are you writing like that? You know what I mean? Anyway. Oh, also, for anyone who doesn't know, Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. He writes under a pseudonym to not be associated with his dad. For anyone who was wondering and before I read this book I like Joe Hill's writing style more than I like Stephen King's now I'm back to liking Stephen King's more just because like Carrie's amazing The Shining's amazing and I'm questioning how his son feels about women but then you also question how Stephen King feels about women because in like it he has that weird like child sex scene because they needed to lose their innocence I need to read it. I haven't actually sat down and read the whole fucking thing. It's like a thousand pages. I need to read it. That's one of the ones I need to read. Because I wonder if, aside from the weird child sex scene, it's actually good. Because I've seen the movies. And those were good. Lots of jump scares. Anyway. So that's that. Look for that coming at a point in time. I won't say soon because I don't know. Okay, this one is also not my normal, like, genre of reads. This is Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Peppernell. I got this at a thrift store for, like, 2 or $3. And I wouldn't buy this normally. I'm not a huge, like, poetry, poetry book reader person. But I love the aesthetic of these books, of these, like, new age poetry books that are, like, very heavily, like, female and like women you know so I love the aesthetic of it I wouldn't I still wouldn't consider myself a person who would like go out and buy one but I saw this at a thrift store for like two or three dollars so I was like let's give it a shot plus it's the first one because this is like this is like a series of hers like pillow thoughts like one two three whatever and I was like plus it's the first one so I'm reading it in order so like let me give it a shot you know one star. One star. One star. One star because you made something. It's zero stars for content. I'm so appalled. This is high school thoughts. You're 14 and you think this is deep. This is 14 year olds on Tumblr in like 2010. You know? It is someone took your high school poetry journal and published it for you and didn't fix it. And I don't mean like grammatically fix it. I mean didn't make it good. And it reads so much like high school and so much like so young. And I don't mean young in like a bad way. I mean young in a the younger you are the more like small enclosed your world is just because you aren't old enough to understand like how big it is in like reality so things that aren't very big seem huge to you because your whole world is you know one town school and your parents you know like your your whole world is so small and you see the same people every day and so like your best friend being a bitch one day is like the end of the world or like your first true love when you're 16 and but daddy I love him that like fucking aerial line where as a kid you're like 
oh my god yes she does king trident sucks i can't believe he would keep him he would keep ariel away from her love and then you get older and you're like oh my god king trident was completely right <laughs> she's stupid i'm glad it worked out where he did give a shit about you but in reality and it's that dynamic of like you were too it's written by someone who's too young to understand that they're stupid and young you know and it's not like I wrote poetry when I was in high school and I would never publish it and it was very deep to me then because it always is because I was fucking 16 and depressed but like I would never publish it because I know like, I understand that it's bad. Um, so because it's written that young, I did some research. This was published when she was 20. She is now 26, the author. This was published when she was 20, which means she wrote it as a teenager. Like, truly, these are teenage thoughts. And people, people told her they were good. And they aren't. Hopefully she's gotten better. But I don't plan on ever reading anything by her ever. I don't. Uh, it, one star, this is trash. Like, just open up your fucking high school journal if you want to experience this book. Like, oh my fucking god. This is getting thrifted for something worthwhile. This is a pocket-sized version of Protection Spells by Aurora Kane. This is the pocket size version because it came, it came in a uh, witch monthly box called Goddess Provisions, which I no longer do, but that's why it's a pocket version. I have no qualms with pocket size books. I know some people are like very hardcore about it needs to be hardback and it needs to be big and blah 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 blah. I don't care. I gave it two stars because it's dumb. I did, I, bent the pages of the ones that are good because all this is is like spells like like every single page is like a different spell right so I bent the pages of the good spells and then I left straight up the pages of the bad spells so it's about a 50 50 split which was more than I was expecting but I got this in a box with other things I would not buy this on my own I would not buy the real version I think all of these like Anytime I picked up any any books that are like just spells, it's usually about 50-50 or like 75-25 of like actual useful things or as opposed to just like bullshit. I never recommend getting a book that's just like spells, love spells, protection spells, whatever the fuck, you know, like they're never worth it. And so like I'll do a review on this. To like talk about like the, the actual like good and bad but I would never recommend getting a book that's just a spell book especially if it's like very new age modern like this because it's just I feel like these books almost always fall into the like category of oh witchcraft is becoming popular let's just pump out some bullshit witchcraft books and give them a fun aesthetic so that the girlies buy them you know two stars last book of the year the astro luna journal written by monica anna so this book was a gift it was given to me by my cousin and she gave it to me and she said i hope this one's good <laughs> because all the reviews i've done this year have been bad books and surprisingly this is a good book I would recommend it um I gave it four stars I haven't completely finished it like I've read all the information in it but there is um worksheets for each full moon for like I don't know if it's a full year but it's like a full zodiac so I guess it would be a full year um but there's worksheets for each full moon and each new moon which I have not done and I do want to do those but I've read all of the like written like actual information information on the book and just based on that four stars but also just 
look at these illustrations where they're all the zodiacs as people and they're the illustrations in this book are so good the information's good it's so aesthetic it's done so well highly recommend i do really like this book so i do want to end this with a look into the future a look into 2024 and what is like currently on my list currently reading everything like that so currently reading two books one of them is this other pocket book that i also got from a guy's provision box this one is called earth magic it is by lindsay squire i am a little over halfway through it honestly really like it currently four stars might push his way to five like genuinely really really like this book like i said haven't finished it but really really like the book i like the illustrations i like how it's organized i like how she talks about different kinds of magic and how everyone's practice she makes it a good point to be like just because i'm telling you to do something this way that's the way that i do it you don't have to do it that way and i feel like so many books especially wiccan books which this one is not um but especially wiccan books are like this is the way to do something period you know and it's like you have to cast a circle you have to work with numbers you have to karma the rule of thirds everything comes back to you like it's, it's very like cut and dry of like this is how you do it this book she acknowledges that this is how she does it and i feel like not enough books do that so currently four stars might push itself to five like this is a really good book honestly the other book i'm reading we're getting into fantasy this year because my cousin this is the my cousin gave me two books for christmas this is the second one she gave me because she said it's time for me to catch up i've been out of my fantasy area er era i grew out of it because i also i don't know mental illness does things to you i grew up reading intense like fantasy books i wouldn't say intense but i mean like lord of the rings like you know fantasy um i grew up on fantasy then i kind of got pulled away from it and i just haven't really made my way back i've been more interested in like educational witchcraft and then like horror and my cousin says it's time for me to get back so she bought me crescent city i am on page hold on 47 chapter four i don't really know what it's about i didn't do research beforehand i have read a court of thorns and roses just that book i haven't read the full series um but so i do have a little bit of experience with sarah j mass i like it i have no qualms i just am not very far into this book to be able to tell you whether it's like something i really like or not i'm it's very much just world building right now so i'm starting it i know vaguely what it's about i know vaguely where it's going i'm also doing a tiktok series on this where i give updates every time i read it but i'm reading this in between other books just because this one is so thick and also I feel like I can't read it very quickly because of how much world building there is and I don't say that as like a bad thing I say that as like there's so much information in it that you have to just go slow because you're introduced to like the whole city and all the different kinds of people that are in the city and who runs it and who runs them and the angels and like all these stuff and it's just you have to sit there and think and I have to carve out time for me to sit and think. Whereas if I'm reading like earth magic or something, it's much more of just like an educational read where it's like, okay, these are crystals. This is what crystals can do. It's like stuff like that where you're not having to like use your full brain to pay attention and be like, oh my God, okay. Remember this character, this character is associated with this group and this group is not this group because of this reason. Like, you know, it's easier to sit down and read these. So, I read this when I have time to sit and consume. 
So this will be read over a long period of time, to be very honest. But in preparation for me to read that book, I asked for Christmas for three books from my mom. I asked for the second one. So I got it. I'm prepared. And then I asked for the newest English version that came out of Chainsaw Man at the current time of me filming this, which is Chainsaw Man 13. I haven't sat down and read it. These only take like 45 minutes to read. Um, just haven't sat down and read it. But I asked for a new one. Will say she had no idea what the fuck this was so I just sent her the link to these books and I said this one just don't ask questions this this one um and then I also asked for House of Leaves which is a very famous like haunted house s story and it's written wild like wild like the it's so weird i don't know much about it i know that it's a trip and it's one of those books where you just have to go with whatever's happening like there's only text at the bottom of the page you just deal with that and i just decided that this year i want to read it i want to i want to know the vibe i want to know the chaos I don't know I am wondering if this is gonna be like catch-22 like I don't know if, if y'all's teachers made y'all read catch-22 in school um, but catch-22 takes like 170 pages before it makes sense and so when I had to read it for school like everyone around me was like this is stupid it makes no sense like what the fuck is happening and at first I was with them and then I hit like page 170 something and then it makes sense you're like, oh, fuck, this is actually, like, a really good book. So I'm wondering if House of Leaves is going to be like that, where it's just a, like, just wait. You'll get there, and then you'll be like, yes. Um, so those are my current reads and reads on the list for 2023. 20, oh, my God. For 2024, there are some other books I'm thinking about reading. This is one of them. A History of God by Karen Armstrong. I've started it. I'm maybe like 10 pages into it, but I started it like a year ago. I'm very intrigued by it. I think it will be fascinating, but this is one of those books where I have to sit down and consume. And that's why I haven't sat down and consumed it, because this one will take me time. Because this is like, she's an ex-nun and she's writing a chronological history of the development of like a monotheistic god through... Um, Judaism, Christianity, and um, Islam, which I love religious studies. I find it absolutely fascinating. I just have to sit down and consume it, and that's just going to take me some time. There's also another honorable mention that I do. Here it is. This one I can actually get to. Um, I do think I might want to read this this year. This is called The Penguin Book of Hell, and it's by Penguin Classics. And it's, from the back, it seems just like a history of different kinds of hell and like how hell has transformed in like uh, over the years, which I also find fascinating. Like religious stuff, now that I've like gone from Christianity to agnostic to pagan, I find religious studies fascinating and I also find the concept of hell fascinating because of how much like Christian hell Christian anything has taken from like other places I just find that fascinating so this is an honorable mention that I might also read this year but this is another book that I'm gonna have to sit down and consume and that's why I have things like Chainsaw Man on this list to break up the monotony of having to like sit and like focus and then you have chainsaw man which is a manga so there's pictures so you can read it like that but those are the only honorable mentions i can think of i know i said it earlier I really don't know if this is the year for it. I really don't know if this is the year that I read a thousand page Stephen King novel. I don't know. 
that's for later me to decide but that's my list for this year um i guess i should do a best and worst okay i would say collective best chainsaw man um individual best the astro luna journal and then i would say the worst is kind of a toss-up between pillow thoughts and nothing but black and teeth i was there a toss-up between the worst those are my thoughts for the year my next one my next video should be the black phone slash 20th century ghost review so look for that one for those interested on my goodreads i do have a a new goal for 2024 because on goodreads you can like set a new goal my goal is 30 books i read 30 this year and my goal is 25 so i'm starting slow and being like okay i read 30 let's set the goal is 30 now and then like see where it takes us my cousin set her goal as 50, which like go off this, but she also has audiobooks because she has a long drive to work there and back, so she'll listen to audiobooks like as she goes to and from work. I have like a 12 minute drive to work, so audiobooks really aren't my vibe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Look for that coming at some point. I won't say soon because I don't know when. Oh, and look for more podcast episodes. I have them planned. I just haven't, you know, done it because... As I said at the beginning of the video, I was sick all of December and I'm still currently sick. So we'll get there when we get there. Bye guys.